Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sabrish Krishnamurthy. I'm a PhD student at State University of New York at Buffalo. Today, I'm going to present the paper titled Flight Terra, a question learning for joint access and flight control in TerraHertz enabled drone network. This work was done in collaboration with my advisor, Dr. Zhang Yu. The outline of the presentation is as follows. Let's start with the motivation. TerraHertz band communication has been envisioned as a key technology to support ultra high data rate application in 5G beyond wireless networks. However, there are a couple of challenges. First, large path loss and hence limited network coverage. Second, visible light like propagation characteristics and hence poor support of mobility in blockage environments. In this paper, we try to answer the question how to achieve reliable and efficient terahertz communication and networking in mobile blockage rich environments. Before going into details of the paper, let's see a few examples of related tools. In the first paper, the authors explore the use of millimeter wave spatial division multiple access to improve the UAV as aided cellular network capacity. In the second paper, the authors evaluate the performance of UAV-assisted millimeter wave network in an urban environment utilizing access point carried by the UAVs. Finally, in the third paper, the authors propose a spectrum management architecture and evaluate the performance of the proposed millimeter wave-based wireless backhaul in UAV-assisted cellular networks. Different from the paper discussed above, in this paper, we focus on a new spectrum scenario called flight era where drone hotspots and ground users are allowed to operate in microwave, millimeter, or terahertz band. For system model, we consider a simple system model where there's a set of flying base station, ground base station, ground user, and blockages. And we also consider access link and backhaul link, where access link is between the ground base station or flying base station to the ground user, and backhaul link is between the flying base station and the ground base station. Next is the blockage model. In order to characterize and get the number of blockages in between the link, in between the node I and J, uh, we use a rectangular blockage model and the number of, blockage, number of blockages can be given as follows, where I is an indicator function, which takes the value of zero or one based on the presence of blockage. Next is the path loss model, where um, beta is the per, per blockage absorption coefficient, D is the distance between node I and node J, and alpha is a path loss exponent for link between node i and node j in frequency band f. The SINR for microwave band link can be given as follows, but, uh, where p is the transmission power of serving base station, pj is the trans in transmission power of interfering base station, and n is the noise power. The achievable rate can be given as follows, where bmc is the microwave band. Next is the uh, millimeter wave link SINR, which can be given as follows where uh, the G max is the maximum transmit gain of base station and maximum receive gain of the user. In order to obtain the gain terms in the denominator, we use bisectorized interference model as shown in the figures. We consider inter-BS interference and intra-BS interference, where inter-BS interference is the interference caused by a two different base station with a user of interest and Intra BS interference is the interference caused by the base station which serves multiple users. So the transmit gain and the receive gain can be given as follows where theta prime is the offset angle and theta i of u is the beam width. Next is the frequency selection function. Here we consider a single, spec single band spectrum axis for ground user and multi band spectrum axis for the base stations. Um, the overall access link rate can be given as follows. Uh, the adjusted uh, access link rate can be given as follows, where RBK is a backhaul link rate. So here we calculate the minimum of access link and backhaul link rate. And based on that value, we proportionally allocate the rate among users. Next, the flight error control problem. The objective is to maximize the aggregate rate of all users by jointly controlling the spectrum access and flight of the flying base station. Where uh, the Maximization problem is that maximization of, uh, variable is the rate where chord is the coordinate of the base station, psi is the frequency selection function, and zeta is the association vector. The above network problem is a mixed integer nonlinear programming problem. Given an arbitrary such problem, it is still an open problem to obtain globally optimal solution with polynomial computational complexity. In order to achieve address this challenge, we design a distributed algorithm based on the combination of echo state learning and reinforcement learning. The distributed solution algorithm is as follows. There are three modules. 
ESL PDT module, ESL OPT module, and RLCTL module. We'll describe each of these modules in the following slides. First is the um, ESL PDT module. The objective is to predict the utility for each flying base station by approximating the mapping of network control variable to the individual utility function based on echo set learning. There are four components that, that are agent, input, action, and reward. Each flying base station is endowed with an ESL PDT module for approximating its own utility function. In each time slot, the flying base station feeds an input and a candidate action to the ESL PDT module, which will then output the reward function value for the flying base station. In order to keep the input dimensionality to the ESL to a minimum, we design three policies. First is a short-term distance association. Second is threshold based spectrum selection. And finally, it is network area discretization. The input to the ESN PDT can be given as follows, where COD I is the location of all other base station, Psi is the frequency selection function, and Zeta is the association profile. The action uh, is the index of the new rectangle, the base station desires to move in the next time slot, where IDM is the rectangle index of BSI, and N is the rectangle index of BSJ. The reward is the aggregate rate achievable by the user served by the base station at the next at the new location where RVAC is the adjusted access rate. Next is the ES and OPT module. The objective is to determine the optimal and next step location for each flying base station given the location of all other flying base stations. Each FBS takes the location information of all other FBS as input. The action contains only the single rectangle in each time slot. The reward is a maximum utility that the FPS may achieve by moving to a new rectangle at the next time slot. For the RLCTL module, uh, the each, FBS, each FBS determines its own best location for the next time slot based on the combination of ES and PDT and ES and OPT. However, this may lead to a local optimum of the flight data control problem. In order to address this challenge, we use reinforcement learning based on epsilon greedy exploration strategy to guide the exploration and exploitation in the flight control of flying base stations. And an RL consists of an environment and a set of agents, states of the environment. The greedy action is obtained based on the combination of ES and PDT and ES and OPT modules. System setting, we consider a network area of 200 cross 200 cross 50, and the central frequency is set to three gigahertz, 30 gigahertz, and 300 gigahertz for the three bands. And the bandwidth is set to two megahertz, 40 megahertz, 10 gigahertz again for the three bands. The transmission power is set to one watt, 250 milliwatt, and 20 milliwatt for the three bands. And we use two threshold that is 100 meter and 10 meters based on which the spectrum band is uh, associated, associated to the user or the base station. The results are average over 50 simulations. And the evaluation plan is as follows. First, we discuss the accuracy and complexity of echo set learning algorithm and then move on to analyzing the throughput achievable with different spectrum bands. Prediction accuracy, the first st uh, step is to train the ESN. In order to train the ESN, we collect the data for 10,000 time slot by actually measuring the link rate by moving the flying base station to random rectangle in each time slot and then test it over 200 more time slots. And as you can see in the two figures, ESN PDT and ESN OPT is able to predict the rate of um, able to predict the rate for the FPS with very high accuracy in all the tested time slots. Next is the network sum rate with varying number of users. Here we compare flight error with two benchmark scheme of with fixed and randomly moving flying base station. We can see that networks sum rate can be significantly increased by flight error with an average gain of 24% and 40% comparing to the random movement and fixed flying base station respectively. In the next experiment, we consider the scenario of flying base station. Here we compare fly, uh, flight error with six benchmark schemes. Again, here we can see that uh, flight error has significant gain in comparison to the benchmarks. And also the sum rate increases with number of flying base stations, but at a different speeds. In the next segment, we consider the scenario of static flying base station. Here we can see that, uh, again, flight error is able to achieve significant capacity gain in comparison to the, all the other schemes. And one more thing is a single terahertz link can be easily disconnected in blockage environments. However, this problem can be effectively mitigated in flight error by adaptively deploying the flying base station 
so the line of sight is maintained at all, all time. And finally, in the final experiment is the fairness analysis. Here we consider mobile and static line base station and different spectrum strategies. For the microwave band only, we can see that the fairness index is almost 0 0.98. So for microwave, the rate, rate is very small, but still it manages to be fair among the users. As we move across the x-axis, we can see that the fairness index fluctuates between 0 0.6 to 0 0.8. However, when we use uh, flight error, we can see that in addition to achieving high data rate, it is also able to maintain fairness among the users. This verifies the capability of flight error in achieving a good trade-off between that high network spectral efficiency and large network coverage. In conclusion, we studied the problem of joint flight control and spectrum access and blockage environments in microwave, microwave and terahertz bands. We provided a mathematical formulation of flight error control problem and designed the distributed solution algorithm in, with combination of acoustic learning and human learning. The effectiveness and efficiency of flight error were verified through an extensive simulation campaign. It, is found, it was found that the terahertz band wireless networks can significantly benefit from mobility of flying base station and users in blockage environment. Thank you. Please feel free to email me at sk382 at buffalo.edu for any comments or any questions. The code to repeat the experiments is available at the GitHub link as shown below. Thank you.